everyone, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412, and finally, we have a large NHL slate to talk about. Uh, they had that COVID pause around Christmas time, kind of got close to the new year. And then for this past week or so, we've just been dealing with two game slates, three game slates, four game slates. Uh, nothing really of too much uh, depth or anything. I don't know what the right word is there. But finally, we have a large slate, uh, a lot of options to go to. Ownership's going to be spread out because there's really not a true number one favorite team uh, on the board tonight. Yeah, you have a couple of decent sized favorites, but we're not seeing any, you know, minus 300 favorites uh, or minus 500 favorites like Florida was that one day um, on this slate. So a lot of even matchups, a lot of star power going tonight. So I am excited about it uh, in that regard. So what we'll do is we'll just go position by position. I'll give you three of my favorite plays, one in each uh, pricing tier, so top, middle, and value. Uh, and then I'll go back through the position and kind of just give you some other guys that could possibly be put as part of your player pool. Uh, so starting off at center, one of my favorite top centers uh, to target tonight is probably going to be Barkov for Florida. I'm going up against Dallas. Dallas is a pretty good uh, home team. They have struggled. Most of their struggles have been on the road. Uh, and same thing with Florida. They have been a great home team, but they struggled a little bit more on the road. However, you know, Barkov, he has produced on the road very well so far this season. Uh, he's played in nine road games. He's got points in eight of those nine games, good for 10 points. And he's got a goal in six of those nine games. So that's pretty decent. He's been frustrating. I, I will admit that he's been frustrating at times this season just because of how deep Florida is. Really, any of their lines can take over a game. I think it was their game. I think it was this one here with Tampa Bay. They scored nine goals. He had a goal and an assist. That was it. For a top line center, you would have expected way more. Um, and he didn't even get that goal until late in the game. So he has been frustrating in that regard. But the Florida offense is just unreal. And Barkov, he's been doing very well uh, so far on the road to start the season. So I don't mind him as a top center option. I like this guy in the mid-tier more. I think he's probably one of my favorite centers on the slate tonight. And that's going to be Jack Hughes. He has been lighting it up uh, in his four games since the COVID pause around the league. Uh, you can see here he's got three three, two, and one point. So three goals, six assists in his four games since he returned. He's got a lot of shots on net as well. He's hit the shot bonus in two of them, almost hit it in a third one. And Columbus, they're a team that is bottom five in the league in allowing goals on the road. Uh, they just struggle on the road for whatever it is. It's probably, you know, in terms of their lack of depth and they kind of get exposed with matchups on the road. But they allow a lot of goals on the road in New Jersey. They've been putting up some goals, as you can kind of see. They've faced some quality teams, Boston, Washington, Edmonton, uh, and they're still putting up four, five, six goals uh, in a game. So Hughes, he's got great uh, talent. We all know that. Um, so I like him in this mid-tier. And then all the way down at the bottom, Min Price, his NHL debut, where even is he? Oh, my goodness. Got to type him in. There he is. Marco Rossi. I don't know why I didn't see him there. Um, he's finally making his NHL debut. Uh, just so happy for this guy. He was a top 10 overall draft pick just a couple years ago. He's the guy that uh, early on in COVID, acquired COVID, and it was – so bad, you know, he had to, you know, he had Thomas Vanek watching him, a former NHLer, and his family was really involved as well, just because it was that scary. Um, so Rossi, he's finally back. He's finally making his debut. He's kind of out of hockey for a year because his uh, COVID case was so bad. Um, but he's got 23 points, 21 AHL games so far. Tough matchup going up against Boston, but still. I, this kid has so much potential. He's going to be a stud in this league uh, in a couple of years. So, and then Price, I don't mind taking a shot on him, uh, especially if you need some salary savings. 
Uh, so those are kind of the three guys I want to highlight on center, but um, some other guys to look at. McKinnon, 9.5K. It is getting kind of high up there. Um, he only has three goals on the entire season. He's more of a, you know, distribute the puck, get set everybody up. Um, but he does shoot the puck a lot as well. I mean, he has been unlucky uh, in his shot percentage, so that is going to improve. Uh, but still, 9-5, it is getting up there. Um, but if you do land on that, I don't mind him. I prefer Rantanen a little bit more uh, for 1K cheaper uh, and kind of the same floor, kind of same upside um, here. Uh, you go Kadri. Sorry, center. You go Kadri uh, on Colorado. I don't mind him either. Tomas Hurdle uh, for San Jose. Got a great matchup going up against Buffalo. Buffalo has been torched by uh, opposing uh, centermen uh, since the COVID return and really all season long, um, honestly. Uh, Boone Jenner, he is another guy that, you know, I want to be highlighting. This Columbus, New Jersey game, I expect to see kind of a shootout happening. Uh, I like both offenses because uh, I don't like either of the defenses. Um, so I do think that this one can shoot out a little bit, so I don't mind Jenner. Tage Thompson for Buffalo, 4.9K. I think that's a pretty nice savings. I think he should be closer up in like the 5.6, 5.7 range, um, somewhere around here. So I do think we are getting a little bit of savings with him, um, being that top line center for Buffalo against San Jose, a San Jose team that, you know, defensively, they've kind of struggled a little bit recently. I think they let up eight goals in their last one out against uh, Pittsburgh, it was. Uh, so, and if it's Aiden Hill in that, uh, even better, um, Reimer would be a little bit more concerning, but if it's Aiden Hill in that, I, I like Thompson even more, uh, Nicholas Waugh for Vegas third line center, uh, but he does get that top power play unit. Uh, so don't mind him there. And then Lundell, uh, for Florida, he's got a point in every single game since the COVID return, uh, four games, five points, 3.8 K not too bad. Not too bad. So let's go over to the winger position. Uh, up at the top, I'm not super thrilled with a lot of these guys. They all have very tough matchups. I'm not saying they're bad plays at all. Obviously, they're all superstars and can go off on any single night, regardless of the matchup. Uh, but I think we're going to go down here to Jake Wenzel uh, for Pittsburgh. 7.3K, you're looking for, in cash at least, uh, I'm going to be looking for like 2.5X his salary so we're looking for like 17 18 points if he gets 2x if he gets 14 points that's fine too it's not going to absolutely destroy you if he gets two times his salary like for cash that's fine Wenzel in his past 14 games he has hit two times salary in 13 of those 14 games it has been absurd what this guy has been able to produce uh he is shooting the puck a ton you can see he's got four uh, multi-point games in a row. Obviously, they're split across because he, uh, with COVID and all that, uh, but still, he's shooting the puck a ton. Pittsburgh, they're on a nine-game win streak. Their offense is cooking right now, uh, so one still at 7.3K. I do not mind him, and I'm going to go with his line mate as the middle guy, and I think he might be one of the highest owned players on the slate tonight, um, given his recent form, given his Price given the matchup. Uh, Rust, he's got five goals, three assists in his past two games since returning from, well, his injury and then uh, COVID shutdown. Um, but Philadelphia, they're missing a lot of their key guys. They're missing Couturier, you know, their top line center, great defensively. They're missing Ryan Ellis, he's been out for a while. They're missing Provorov now, uh, a top defender. Uh, so now he's going to be going up against uh, guys like Rasmus Ristolainen uh, as Philadelphia's best defenseman. And as a Sabres fan, I know that is not good for Philadelphia. Uh, so I think this top line of Pittsburgh is going to do great. Um, Claude Giroux, he's another guy that's out for Philadelphia. Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, so Rust, I think at 5.5K, he's probably going to be the highest owned uh, cash play. Uh, tonight so if you just like throw him into your lineups uh, just kind of as like a blocker don't mind him I don't even think he is a blocker because he's not hurting you salary wise uh, and he's just that good of a spot and then for our value we will also once again go to the uh, min price barrel uh, Thomas Tatar Tatar top line uh, skating with Jack Hughes uh, so you can uh, pair him with Jack Hughes 
Uh, he's playing on that top line. He's also skating on the top power play unit for New Jersey. And like I mentioned earlier, Columbus, they allow a lot of goals on the road. And Jersey, they really haven't been too shabby in terms of offensive production uh, as of late. So Thomas Tatar, do not mind him at 2.5K. You're getting a top line, top power play unit guy uh, who's skating with another guy we're interested in, in Jack Hughes. So other wingers that you could be interested in, I mentioned Rantanen uh, earlier. I like him more than McKinnon, uh, just because you get that 1K savings there. Um, Marshawn, Pasternak's on that second line. He finally broke his goal drought last time out, but I don't mind uh, him, but I would prefer Marshawn uh, over him. Patrick Kane going up against Arizona. We've been picking on Arizona all season long. Uh, so it's kind of odd that, you know, I'm not really too high on Chicago tonight. Uh, but if you do go to Chicago, Patrick Kane, no issues with that. Calgary, I have to mention Johnny Goudreau, and I have to mention uh, Matthew Kachuk, just because these guys on the road have been amazing. Johnny Goudreau in particular, I think he's on like an 11-game uh, road point streak. Um, he's just been phenomenal. He's shooting the puck a ton. You can kind of see he's got the ceiling upside to go along with it. Tampa Bay, tough matchup. I get it. Uh, but Johnny Goudreau at 6.5K, I think that is just too deep for him. Uh, so I don't mind him there. Erod, uh, he is just taking his game to another level in Pittsburgh. Uh, he's got a great ceiling. He can put up seven, eight, nine, sometimes 10 shots on goal a game, but he can also shoot the puck zero or one times a game. So be cautious about that. Uh, Kachuk already talked about, um, what's going on here? Clayton Keller, he's been doing really well as of late. Uh, going up against Chicago, that's a pretty decent matchup. Um, Jeff Skinner, or even Victor Olofsson for Buffalo. Uh, both these guys, you know, they're going to see a lot of ice time. They're going to see that top power play unit. Uh, if Buffalo's going to score tonight, and I think they're going to. It's not like they've been shut out in any games or even just like scoring one goal. Like they're scoring two, three, four goals a game. Um, and the offense has to come from somewhere. So I think it would be that top line of Thompson, who I mentioned in the center position. And then Olafson and Skinner. Uh, and then the last guy we're going to talk about here is just Capo Caco uh, for New York, going up against Vegas. Top line, uh, so line one and power play one, uh, going up against Vegas here, just 3.5K. Obviously, there's a lot of other guys there, uh, but it is 11-game slate, lots of options. Uh, and we're trying to keep this video under 20 minutes. Uh, so over to the defense. Um, kind of the same thing as like winger. Uh, the super top guys, I'm not 100% thrilled with just because either they got tough matchups or, you know, they're priced a little bit higher than I want them to be. Um, but going down, I think Brent Burns going up against Buffalo uh, is is up there as one of my favorite options uh, just because he has floor in pretty much everything. You know, he's able to accumulate points, whether it's scoring a goal himself or setting it up and getting an assist. He shoots the puck a ton. He's going to be blocking shots. Eric Carlson, uh, we're going to have to see what his uh, injury status is. I know it's up in the air as of now, uh, but if Carlson's out, yeah, Carlson's day to day. But if Carlson is out, Burns is probably going to see even more ice time than he's already seeing. Uh, and if that's the case, you know, you can boost him up even more. Uh, in the mid tier, we're going to go with Rasmus Dahlin, another guy uh, from the San Jose Buffalo game. Dahlin, ice time has been insane. You can see he's getting 27 minutes of ice time per game lately. Uh, he's been kind of seeing 24, 25 uh, minutes of ice time all season long. He skates on that top power play unit. He is the top guy for Buffalo defensively. Uh, you can kind of see his scoring kind of has been coming up as of late. Uh, so San Jose, Buffalo, I could see this game being a higher scoring game. I see this being more of like a 3-4, 3-5, 5-3 three, uh, kind of game. So much like that Columbus, New Jersey game, I think this San Jose Buffalo game could see quite a few goals in it. And then my favorite uh, low tier play um, is going to be, where is he? Boakvist. There we go. Uh, for Columbus, 3.7K. Now, game logs, they don't look too pretty. Uh, however, it is the opportunity that he is going to get here. Um, look at that. Like, it's another Columbus, New Jersey Buffalo San Jose guy. I apparently really like those games for goals tonight. 
Uh, but Boquist, he is going to bump up into that top pair, top power play unit as well uh, for Columbus because Zach Wierenski has been put into the COVID protocol. Uh, so Columbus is losing a major, major key player in their defense in terms of you know offense production and in terms of ice time. And somebody's got to pick up that slack. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Boquist tonight uh, going up against Jersey, who allow a lot of points against um, defenders. So, yeah. Uh, you know, if you go up to Makar, I don't mind him at all. Josie, he's just insane. Uh, Seth Jones, he's kind of been a floor play. He's had a great matchup going up against Arizona. Um, Latang, really Pittsburgh in general. Latang, Dumoulin. Uh, Dumoulin more for like block shots and everything, uh, but they're fine. You can go on the opposite side of Pittsburgh and go for a Philly block shot guy because Philly, they allow some of the most shots on net per game in the entire league. On the on the other side, Pittsburgh, they shoot in like they're like a top three shooting team per game in the entire league. So getting a shot blocker from Philly. So I'm thinking of a guy like Justin Braun. Uh, he's probably what three, two, somewhere down. Look at that, three, one right there. Um, so Justin Braun, I wouldn't be shocked if he hit that shot bonus or a shot block bonus at all tonight. Um, at just 3.1K, he's going to be a fine value too. So um, Russellina, he's seen that increase with uh, Provorov out. Um, yeah, that kind of that kind of covers everything. We're kind of rambling on here, uh, but yeah, no absolute true major favorite uh, on the slate tonight. But I think there are a lot of decent matchups, a couple of games that I think could be shootouts or shootout potential. Um, McAvoy, like him too. Uh, but yeah, so ownership's going to be pretty spread out. I think Rust is going to be your highest owned player. I think. In cash games, uh, it's just going to be a lock and load. Don't even think too much about it. Uh, but everybody else, you could definitely make a case uh, for a handful of guys in each of the positions um, who are fantastic plays. So as always, uh, good luck in your contests. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. It does help us out a lot. Um, so yeah, good luck in your contests. And we will see you in the next video.